Welcome to online MOOCs program. Today's lesson will be on globalization and urbanization. I am Christopher from Madras Christian College would be helping you to understand what is globalization and urbanization and the interlink between them. Today's contents will be on what is globalization, what is urbanization, the interconnection between globalization and urbanization and we will understand this through a case study. What is globalization? Globalization refers to the widening, deepening and speeding up of global interconnectedness and includes four socio-spatial dimensions. The stretching of social, political and economic activities across the borders is the first socio-spatial dimension. The intensification of interconnectedness and of patterns of interactions and flows is the second one. The speeding up of global interactions and processes and the interwining of local and global in ways that local events may affect distant lands are the socio-spatial dimensions of globalization. Contemporary globalization has changed the way the earlier scientists saw globalization, its evolution, growth and process. Contemporary globalization is a process of both combined and uneven development. Combined because it draws together people, goods and capital almost cancelling distance of time and space while ignoring existing disparities and inequalities. On the other hand, the uneven, it is called as uneven because it creates greater disparities and inequalities in resources, income, health and cultural power than those that it initially brought together. What are the causes of globalization? It is very interesting to know there are many reasons that brought about globalization into this world. The first one is due to the manufacturing exports and employment cities which grew and developed within themselves. Cities today need to remain attractive to their own inhabitants in order to retain their income. People move into cities only because of the attractiveness that it provides in terms of culture, employability and other social needs. Improved transport, increased labor and capital mobility and improved technology actually boosted the reasons for the growth of globalization to the contemporary level. Transportation have, have changed the way globalization has mushroomed. Increased labor availability and cross mobility, capital mobility and the use of technology has increased or even accelerated the growth of globalization. The other causes, advancement in the information and communication technology, transnational flows like capital, goods, services, people, media images, ideas or pollution have also increased the reasons for the growth of globalization. Transnational networks including corporation markets, governments, NGOs and criminal activities, cultural communities have advanced the growth of globalization. We will try to understand what is urbanization. 
urbanization is nothing but the process by which a large number of people become permanently concentrated in relatively small areas forming what is called as modern cities. There is a huge migration of people from their native places to towns and cities in search of jobs, better standards of living, good environment, sustainable development, social needs and so many other factors are responsible for people moving from their native remote places to different towns and cities where a large number of people come and congregate and live together. The city today is both a productive agglomeration and a place of living for both local and extra local consumers heralding the end of primacy of manufacturing. How do we understand the connection between globalization and also the urbanization as a concept? This is what we call it as interconnection. The process of urbanization is part and parcel of the process of globalization. This is a simple understanding of the word interconnection when we deal with urbanization and globalization. Okay. There cannot be urbanization literally without globalization. Interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is fueled by the advances in information and communication technology of the past couple of decades. A lot of advancement in the field of IT have has enabled the growth of globalization and urbanization and the interconnection between both. Over the last 50 years as globalization has accelerated and intensified, cities have become privileged loci of economic activity, political power and also of cultural policy and governance. Cities offer the necessary socio-spatial dimension that economic and cultural globalization requires. City could satisfy enormous needs of the people who come from various remote parts of any nation. Cities are able to provide whatever is needed for the common man. They bring together a lot of people. They bring together products of different manufacturing industries. They bring together services they bring together expertise, they bring people or they serve people in terms of their consumption, a lot of information and communication into the intense and the dense network of the city is possible through globalization. Cities also epitomize the double potential of globalization for both homogenization which is nothing but through the diffusion and prevalence of western lifestyles. I underline western lifestyles and a global culture of consumerism and for diversity. For example, by exacerbating identity related conflicts or local grievances or through the opening up of new opportunities for cultural expression. The combined effects of globalization and urbanization also favor the emergence of a new type of city which now we call it as city nationalism. What is city nationalism? It is nothing but a creation of a city which is 
imagined communities of people who feel they form a different cultural and a political community and who feel that they also belong together to each other and that is what what we now call it at as a city nationalism which is a new word that is emerging now in the in terms of globalization this is the graph that explains uh, how the supply for the city happens and the demand of the city is met through different types of supplies. The as you see uh, on the left side you see the supplies and on the right side we see the demands which is from the local and also the extra local who live here. So, the city development anchoring milieu is this is what at four different sites. The supply is from the city itself which could act as a place of production which is nothing but productive agglomeration. The city also consumes city as a living environment because there is lot of consumerism that is going on now. Coming to the demand of the extra local we see and the local we see first the manufacturing. In manufacturing there is a very specialized production for export markets that happens in almost all the cities. Development is happening through industrial conglomerates, industrial parks with a very very high level of competitiveness. The second aspect is the tourism. There is a lot of attractive characteristics in terms of any city lot of consumers are attracted and they come as tourists into the cities. The development in terms of such huge tourist population requires a lot of residential demands and these are developed and they are presented in the most attractive way possible. The third is the local services. Services in terms of real estate for the local population and this development happens through a lot of internal diversification. The fourth one is the short supply chains. This is nothing but a specialized production for local population. The development is by substitution of imports the more there is a demand and which is not produced in cities have to be imported and cities are able to import a lot to satisfy the consumers and the consumerism that actually happens because of large migration of people from the remote places into these towns and cities. Manufacturing, tourism, short supply chains, and local supply serves as an anchor for city development. Okay. We need a lot of manufacturing, a lot of tourism that happens into the city and there are very, very short supply chains from the nearest villages. They supply uh, vegetables, food and all other things to the main city markets. All these factors are made easy through globalization. How do these things are made easier through convenient transportation. Goods and service get much much transported faster than the earlier regimes. International borders are opening much faster that made transportation of tourists also much easier online. For example, online visa applications have made uh, tourists to get visas online, long queues are avoided uh, through internet they are able to uh, download their visas and travel much easier. Online ticketing have made tourism much easier. Booking of rooms access to homestays are now possible through technology and tourism has enhanced because of such development in the IT sector and in the process of globalization too. We will now try to un understand globalization, urbanization 
through a case study uh, of a city called Hanoi in the country called Vietnam. Hanoi city is an example of urbanization. All urbanization is not modernization. When you study the example of Hanoi city, Hanoi city though is an example of urbanization, there are a lot of peculiar features that are attached which we may not accept as urbanization. Because Hanoi city in spite of all the development a major city in the country called Vietnam is still holding on to a lot of traditional features which are very very unique and peculiar and these they would like to preserve. The urban atmosphere in Hanoi is created by mainly two topics. One is the movement, the other is the commerce. The density of people leads to a constant flow, meetings, interactions, interlacing private life with public life. This is the simple version of understanding Hanoi as a city. Life on the streets is outstanding. Unexpected meetings are taking place frequently and the social control is high. Places that seem odd in the western point of view possess high urban qualities for public life and integration even though they are located next to a busy street with so much of noise and pollution or a non-space, a spot where no one happened to park their bike that specific day or obsessing part of the street, putting up a table for selling newspapers. Several examples of collective space exist in Hanoi. Corners have several expressions over the day depending on the activities or non-activities. These corners can be interpreted, can be understood by different people in different ways based on the kind of activities or no activity in these places. According to Vietnamese tradition, Generations are still living together in the same house. Urbanization do not allow joint families. More and more urbanization have narrowed down the families into nano families. But in Vietnam tradition, urbanization does not mean families are nuclear. Still, lot of people, family, family members live together in the same house. This is because of a many, many practical reasons that are attached, mainly the economic issues. The second one is the lack of space available in terms of residential facilities. Babysitting by the elders is still practiced much larger because hiring of maids to look after babies or small baby crushes are not affordable and so elders stay with the family and so making the families look much much bigger in the same house. And there are still most of the elderly people either lack homes or they do not afford a single house. And so, the children, the grandchildren, the grandparents all live in the same house and they are mutually benefited in urban places like Hanoi in, this, in the country of Vietnam. Worshipping is an important part of Vietnamese everyday life. Architecture is also very different in Hanoi. The much of the modern technology has not touched upon the construction style of 
the technology in terms of construction in Vietnam. Odd elements or proportions in architecture can therefore, not simply be considered as low aesthetic values. They believe in those traditional architecture and that is what is so unique of everyday Vietnamese life. They are an expression of something both between traditions and modern architecture. There is a combination, a beautiful combination of tradition and modernity prevailing at the same time when you visit a city like Hanoi in Vietnam, which is one of the urban centers in the country of Vietnam. These are the resources that are available for you to go through the different you know the magnitude of urbanization and globalization as such. Journals from the SAGE, the academic uh, journals from Oxford University Press, the websites of Future Learn gives a lot of information or, or additional information with regarding to globalization and urban planning. Thank you.